the world is driven by water and gasoline. Have you ever wondered how they are transported through pipelines hundreds of miles long? It has an interesting nature of fluids behind it. Let's explore. The property of the fluid which governs this is the viscosity. It is the resistance to flow provided by the fluid. Every fluid has this resistance. Consider a fluid flowing in a pipe. If the fluid has zero viscosity, then the velocity profile inside the pipe looks something like this. Very uniform. The discharge of fluid through the pipe can be calculated by using the area and the velocity. But ideal fluids are not possible in reality. Every fluid has some viscosity. This viscosity also changes with temperature. So, what happens when real fluids flow through the pipe? A very interesting thing happens to the flow. When a viscous fluid flows in pipe, the fluid sticks to the pipe walls and its velocity becomes zero. It is called a no-slip condition. As we move away from the pipe walls, the velocity gradually increases and becomes maximum at the center. Glorious! Now we can see the velocity profile has completely changed. It is no more uniform, but is varying and parabolic in shape. Now, the question arises, which velocity to use for calculating discharge? The velocity is no more uniform. We create an imaginary uniform velocity called average velocity. This will be used for the calculation of discharge through the pipe. The variation of velocity is quantified by velocity gradient. We can clearly see that the velocity variation is large near the pipe wall and is less away from the wall towards center. Okay, what this velocity gradient is going to do? This velocity gradient along with the fluid viscosity will enable us to determine the shear stress. This shear stress or shear force is what resists the fluid flow and results in energy loss. The Newton's law of viscosity is used for calculation of shear stress. The shear stress variation is linear with maximum shear stress on the pipe walls. The energy loss due to this shear stress occurs in the form of pressure head loss. When we supply a fluid, maybe gasoline or water, at a certain pressure, the viscous resistance of the fluid creates shear stress, and the pressure drops as it moves along the pipe. At the exit, we will get lesser pressure than expected. The criticality is if the fluid is more viscous, and the additional power to overcome this viscous resistance is not supplied, the flow may not even happen. Consider a situation where you have to send the oil to a city 100 kilometers away through a pipeline. If the city needs oils at 500 pascals, at what pressure you will send the oil? If you send the oil at exactly 500 pascals, then what will happen? We have seen there will be pressure head loss when fluids flow through pipe. So, the city will get oil at less pressure or the flow may not reach, depending on properties of fluid. We need to understand how much pressure drop occurs to deliver the oil to the city. The hagen poiswheel head loss relation allow us to estimate the head loss in pipe flow. We should provide this additional head loss at inlet to deliver oil. From the head loss relation, we can understand that the head loss depends on fluid properties and also on the piping dimensions. To send high viscous fluids or to long distances, the pumping power required will be high to overcome these losses. In general, intermediate pumping or boosting stations will be used, especially for long distance piping systems. So, next time, when you use water, or fill gasoline, think about this marvelous engineering behind pipe flow.